So in this video, we are going to be doing some practice with power series, just kind of seeing what values of x are going to make a given series converge, okay? And, well, yeah, we're, we're answering that question. What values of x make the series converge? And we have this series down here, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Now, it's kind of hard to see if you don't already know this, but this actually is a geometric series, okay? This is a a geometric power series. Now, this doesn't really, this might not make sense to you, right? Because our exponent is n, okay? But the reason why this makes sense is because our index is n equals 0. If our index was n equals 1, which is most likely what you've been dealing with, okay, uh, in when we were trying to prove if a regular series was convergent or divergent, you probably had the index of n equals 1. In that case, a geometric series is given by when you have an n minus 1 as the power. Now why does this make sense? Well, if you if you start from n equals 0, okay, that's your that's your first term in your series, then you have an x to the 0 here. Okay? And that's the beginning of a geometric series. But let's say we have the index of n equals 1, okay? And we have an x to the n minus 1. Our first term is at n equals 1 now, not n equals 0. But plug in n equals 1 and you still get x to the 0 power, which is going to be a constant that starts our geometric series, okay? And so, so that's the whole idea, okay? So you can kind of see the trend here. If you raise the index by 1, Okay, and you're going to focus more on this when we take derivatives of power series. But if you raise the index by 1, well, then you have to kind of subtract 1 from every n. Okay, and you can see why that works. Okay, we just kind of went through how these things are the same. Okay, so, but you're most likely going to see this series over the one that we just went over with power series. Okay, don't ask me why, I'm not really too sure. I didn't like it myself, but... It's kind of what you see more of. So, when does what for what values of x are going to make this series converge? Well, you can see here that this x is going to act as our common ratio here. Okay, and when does a geometric series converge? Well, it's when whatever our our r is is in between negative one and one. Okay. As I said, our common ratio is x, so that is, that's basically it, okay? That is the interval of x values where a series is going to converge. Okay, let's try another example. So now we're going to be dealing with a kind of more difficult series. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the n over the cube root of n, okay? Now... We're not going to just be able to, uh, you know, f use the uh, geometric series um, convergence for this or the p-series convergence or anything like that. It's neither of those series. So we're going to have to either use ratio or root test here, okay? And we're not going to be able to use root test because we have a cube root of n in the denominator. That's not being raised to the nth power, okay? So we've got to use that ratio test. We take the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Okay, that's what the ratio test is telling us to do. Now, writing that all out, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of, I'll wait to put our absolute values on until the end, we have a negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 over the cube root of n plus 1, and that's going to be all over negative 1 to the n times x to the n over the cube root of n. And we have to take the absolute value of that. So cleaning this up, okay, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of first, are we gonna need to worry about those negative ones? Well, no, because we're taking an absolute value, okay? So we can kind of just get rid of those. Now, we know that we have a x to the n plus one and that 
the kind of its counterpart is that x to the n, so we're going to have that be over x to the n. And we have, that's going to be times the cube root of n plus 1, its counterpart is the cube root of n, and that's going to be in the numerator. So we just have the, actually I'm going to rewrite this as n over n plus 1 to the 1 third. Okay, so you can see we have that cube root of n on top and the cube root of n plus 1. Okay, I just took that cube root out and put it as the, the power on the outside, the 1 third. Okay, so, you know, I just, is it going to make it a little easier to take that limit? So, we kind of can just simplify it further here and we get the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over x to the n is just x. Okay, it's just x to that first power. Now, what about, what about this n over n plus 1 to the 1 third? Well, it doesn't really matter that it's being taken to the 1 third. I mean, we have an n over n plus 1 here. If you take the limit of that, as n approaches infinity, you're just going to get 1, right? The, co the, the highest power of n is 1, so we look at the coefficients on n to the first power. It's 1 on the top, it's 1 on the bottom, and what that means is that the limit of this is just going to be 1. Okay, so we just end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x, and that, of course, is just going to be the absolute value of x. Now, we want to see what values of x make the series converge, right? And when does the well, when is this going to converge? Well, the ratio test tells us that it's when the absolute value of the well, it's when the product of your limit, okay? So when the product of your limit is less than one, and in that case, it's the absolute value of x. Okay, so, and of course, we don't know about when the absolute value of x equals 1, so we got to test that later, but we have the absolute value of x is less than 1, and that means that we know right now, okay, so we, we know right now that this series will converge when x is between negative 1 and 1, right, that's what it's telling us with that absolute value, okay. But we got to check when x equals negative 1 and when x equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to raise the board here and then we're going to be doing that. So first, remember why we're, and why we're plugging in uh, negative 1 and 1. Okay, when we have a negative 1 and 1, the absolute value of negative 1 and 1 is 1. Okay, so... When, when you have the ratio to the product of your limit, okay, when that equals 1, it's inconclusive. So we have to check ourselves. So we got to plug this back in to the series, okay? When we plug in a negative 1, because that's one of our endpoints, okay, we plug in a negative 1 for x, so we have a negative 1 to the n now, and a cube root of n on the bottom, okay? Well, we had that negative one there and well what that's going to do is kind of just become one okay because it's going to be multiplied by that negative one to the n that's already there okay so you end up getting a negative one to the two n okay, because there's two of them there and well that means well you're always going to have an even exponent okay so you end up getting a 1 there all the time, okay? So when we plug in negative 1, we get a 1 over the cube root of n. Now, what do we do from here? Well, actually, we have a p series now. So, well, first off, what is our p? Okay, we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, rewriting this as 1 over n to the 1 third. You see that we have a p of 1 third. Okay, so, well, we know that that is less than 1. Okay, it's less than or equal to 1. And that means that this is going to be a p-series that is divergent because the p is less than or equal to 1. So, what does that mean for us? Well, since when we plugged in negative 1, okay, we plugged in a negative 1 for x, that's what we did here that made our series divergent, 
okay? What that means is that this isn't going to be included in that interval, okay, uh, of the values of x that are making this series converge, okay? So next we need to find if 1, when we, if we plug in x equals 1, will that make the series converge or diverge? And then we'll be able to kind of just answer this question in full, and that'll be it. So let's plug in 1 here. If we plug in 1 for x, we get a negative 1 to the n times 1 to the n over the cube root of n. Now, that 1 to the n, that's not going to do anything. So we just end up with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over the cube root of n. Now, what could we really do with this here? We can use the test for divergence, but that's not going to do anything for us. The integral test, we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, neither are we going to be able to do the comparison or limit comparison test. You can kind of already guess here we're going to have to use the alternating series test. Okay, and the two conditions for the alternating series test is that we need to make sure that b sub n is decreasing. And we also need to make sure that the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n is equal to zero. Okay, so we got to meet, meet those two conditions. Now we have our a sub n right here, but how do we get to our b sub n? Well, we take out what is making this series alternating, and that means that our b sub n is going to be equal to 1 over the cube root of n. Now, is this decreasing? Well, if we plug in an n plus 1, so we find the next term in that kind of that series, we just end up getting 1 over the cube root of n plus 1. Okay, that's the next term. Okay. So, is this going to be greater than or less than this? Well, the denominator is greater, right? It's got that n plus 1 there. So, that means overall it's smaller, okay? So, you can see here that it is decreasing, and that meets our first condition. Next, we need to take the limit as n approaches infinity of this b sub n, okay? So, we take the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the cube root of n. And you can pretty much, I mean, you can easily tell here that as n approaches infinity, this limit is going to equal 0. Okay, so that meets our second condition, right? And that means that this series is going to converge by the alternating series test. So what does this all mean? Well, we've already figured out that x is going to be convergent in between negative 1 and 1. But what we were just doing, right, was figuring out if we're going to have a line under these inequalities. And when we plugged in negative 1, it made the series divergent. So we're not going to be including negative 1. But with 1, it made the series convergent. So we are going to include that in our interval. Okay, that's a terrible line. Redo the whole thing. There we go. So right there, that is the values of x that are making this series converge. Okay, so that's basically it. Okay, uh, just kind of first off using the, you know, the ratio of root test and then testing your endpoints. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series, the explanation video for power series, and the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you'd like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon.